This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, I'm very excited. I'm very happy for you. I'm very happy that you made it here tonight. Because uh, we're about to hear, we're about to learn a very fundamental principle in Judaism. And sometimes the more obvious and the more simple something is, the more overlooked it is and the less we know about it. We begin in uh, Parshas Vayera. And the Torah tells us in great detail about the chesed of Avram Avinu, specifically about his achnasas archem, the way he hosted guests. Now, those who are familiar, if you make it for shachris, then you know there are many different categories of gmilas chasad, there are many, many categories of kindness. You have bikr choylem, you have achnasas kala, visiting the sick, helping someone get married. You have lending money, which is a specific mitzvah dairaisa of all the forms of chesed. Lending money is really the only form the Torah leg- legislates as a specific mitzvah dairaisa. There are many forms of kindness, and we could be sure that Avraham Avinu performed every type of kindness. No question. Avraham Avinu was proficient. He was par excellence in every form of kindness. And yet, there is one type of chesed that Avraham Avinu did that the Torah not just tells us that Avram Avinu did this chesed, but the Torah gives, goes into great detail, telling us every little detail of the chesed of Avram, and that is when it comes to the mitzvah of Hachnas Sarchem, where the Torah says Avram Avinu, it was the third day of his mila, and he sees the three men, and he runs to them, and he offers them water to wash their feet, and he offers them a place to rest under the tree, and he offers them something to drink, and he offers them bread, and butter, and milk, and meat, and everything, everything you can imagine. And he waiters them, he stands over them, and he takes <laughs> care of them, and he sends Yishmael to train him in mitzvahs, and Sarah's in the tent, and every little detail of the, of the Hachnas HaSarchim of Avram Avinu, the Torah spells out in great detail. Why? I'm sure Avram Avinu visited sick during his lifetime. I'm sure, you know, one time Avram Avinu used to stop off in the local hospitals. Why doesn't the Torah say, yeah, and one time Avram Avinu saw this really sick guy, and uh, his toe was bothering him, and Avram Avinu went, and he lifted up his foot, and he brought him some water, and Avram Avinu went and turned on the light for him, and he got him, a, you know, a newspaper, and Avram Avinu bought him flowers and chocolates with a cherry on top. Why doesn't the Torah tell us that about the Bikr Chaylam of Avram Avinu, about the Levayas Hames of Avram Avinu? No. Of all the forms of chesed that the Torah chooses to tell us that Avram Avinu performed, Hachnasas Archem. Why specifically the mitzvah of Hachnasas Archem? And then the Torah tells us one of the most startling things in the entire Chumash. God Himself comes to visit Avram Avinu. It was the third day of His Mila. Vayera, Elav, Hashem, Eloni, Mamre. Avram Avinu, who's there? Hashem says, it's me, Avram. God says, I'm here, I came to visit you. Fine. So, uh, Avraham is busy sitting there, he's basking in the glory of the Divine Presence. And all of a sudden, from a distance, Avraham Avinu sees the three angels. He thought they were three Arabs. And he goes, he runs to them. Well, one second. But, but he's in the middle of talking to Hashem. So listen to what the Pasuk says. Vayoymar, and he said, Adoy, Shem. Hashem. If, please, if I have found favor in your eyes, Please, don't pass by. Wait for me. Rashi explains that Avram Avinu is talking to God. He's saying, God, I know you came to visit me, but wait up, wait a second. I have more important business to take care of. I'll be right back. You mind if I put you on hold? So Avram Avinu puts Hashem on hold. He runs to the guests. He gives them water. He gives them food. He gives them a place to sit and a place to rest and a place to... Uh, to uh, to rest from their weariness, and Avraham Avinu comes back to the Rebbein Hashem. In other words, he's saying, Hashem, Rebbein Hashem, wait up, wait for me, I have more important business to take care of. That's what Rashi says. You look at Rashi. Rashi says, Davar Acher, Kodesh. Avraham Avinu is dressing, addressing the Rebbein Hashem. He's telling Hashem to wait for him. Ad sheyarotz v'yachnes as archem until he runs and he gets the guests. I Rashi says Avram Avinu already got the guests. Rashi says the pesukim are out of order. Okay, just think about what's going on. Avram Avinu is talking not to an important person, not to the God Adar, to God Almighty, to the Rebbeinu Shalom. 
and Hashem's telling them, and all of a sudden, Adam Avinu says, sorry, wait up, wait a second, I have something better to, to take care of. So says the Gemara Masech the Shabbos, you know what you learned from here? On the third line, in the Gemara on Shabbos, on Dav Kuf Chav Zayin, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav Gedoyla, Hachnasas, Orchin mehakbalas pene shechina. Inviting a guest is more important than greeting God. Dechsev, because the pasuk says vayoy mar, and Avraham says to Hashem, imna matzasi chen be'enecha al nosav. That's a pretty. That's a whopper. That's a big chiddush. That's a very novel concept. Where I, the Gemara is telling us from the fact that Avraham tells Hashem, "Wait for me. I have something more important to take care of." We learn from there, "Hachnasas Archim is more important than beholding, greeting the face of Hashem. Ask the Vilna Gain, How do you know it's more important? Maybe they're equal. Maybe they're both equally important. And Avram Avinu saying to Hashem, Okay, I greeted you. Now it's time to greet the guests. And maybe these two mitzvahs are of equal importance. So listen to what the Vilna Gaon says. Avram Avinu is sitting there. He's in the middle of talking to Hashem. Right? Hashem is uh, coming to his tent. Avram Avinu is beholding. He's taking in God's presence. Whereupon Avram Avinu sees in the distance three guests coming. Now, how does Avram Avinu go to the guests? Does he tippy toe to the guests? Does he walk slowly? The Torah says, he runs to them. Is he running backward or is he running forward? Now, Avram Avinu is not a cornerback, right? He's not <laughs> running backward. So Avram Avinu, presumably, it says, Vayarat them. he's running toward them. That means he turns his back to Hashem and he runs to the guests. So you hear what's going on? Avram Avinu is basking in the divine glory. He's beholding Hashem's countenance. He's greeting Hashem. Hashem's talking to him. And Avram Avinu turns his back on God and runs to greet the guests. Now, this is a very important halach. If you're talking to your Rebbe and it's time to leave, you don't turn your back on him and walk out. The way you uh, walk out is, you know, you sort of you walk backward because you're now to turn your back on your Rebbe. So listen to what Avram Avinu is doing. He turns his back on God and he runs head first to the guests. He runs head first to the guests and turns his back on God. How is he allowed to do that? Ah, oh, you know what you see from here? That greeting a guest is more important than greeting God. That's how we see it. The fact that Avram Avinu put, turned his back to the Rivanisham and ran toward the guests, we see from there. So very good. Now we understand how we're able to learn from the behavior of Avraham that greeting a guest is more important than greeting Hashem. The fact that Avraham turned his back on Hashem, that shows us what's more important. But how did Avraham Avinu know? Who told him? Who told Avraham Avinu that it's more important to greet a guest than to greet Hashem? So I think, I believe we are now featuring for the very first time in our Mar Mekoymois from the Sefer Tairas Emes. Nothing to do with this shul. Nothing to do with this shul. The Sefer Tairas Emes. You know, I used to think when I first came here, people got an aliyah. I used to think they're, you know, they're thanking Hashem for the shul. They said, I used to think, you know, no, I'm just joking. Anyway, so the Sefer Tairas Emes was written by Rav Nassan Adler. Nassan Adler was the Rebbe, the Chassam Seifer. He lived from 1741 to 1800. Rav Nassan Adler, one, one of the greatest all-time Mikubalim. Many stories how when the Chassam Seifer was in trouble, Rav Nassan Adler would say a special incantation, and they would disappear. They would, they, it would come in handy sometimes, right? You know, you know, all of a sudden you just, you know, poof, you disappear. So anyway, Rav Nassan Adler, Rav Nassan Adler was, he had a yeshiva in Frankfurt, but... The Balabatim gave him a run for his money. They gave him a very hard time because of Kashrus. He had very high standards. And because of that, he had to run away and he had to take a rabbinical post in Moravia. Chassam Soifer writes that he ran after his Rebbe a hundred miles on foot to be with his Rebbe. He went away from his family, his father and mother as a young boy. He couldn't leave his Rebbe alone. Okay? So says of Nassim Adler, I ask you the following question. How did Avram Avinu know how to do any mitzvah? How did he know? Right? There was no art scroll back then. How did Avram Avinu know how to do any of the mitzvahs? So says of Nassim Adler, if you look at the end of this week's parasha by the Akedah, there's a very unusual expression. 
It says by the Akedah, when Avram Avinu was about to shech Yitzchak, it says, Vayishlach Yodai. Right? He sent forth his hand. What do you mean he sent forth his hand? Imagine, you know, you're writing a book, and you're telling how the guy paid for something in a store. So imagine if you wrote, he sent forth his hand. What do you mean he sent? He paid for it. You don't send what your hand is your messenger, and you have to like, say, hand, I need you to do me a big favor. Go now and move three inches forward. I mean, who talks like that? What does it mean Avram sent forth his hand? It says of Nassim Adler, Avram Avinu was so in tune and so in sync with the will of God that he realized naturally that his avarim, his limbs, naturally went to do what Hashem wanted. So for example, all of a sudden his, his, he would run, he would make tefillin, and he would put on tefillin. It, it was just programmed in. Anytime anybody needed a favor, Avram Avinu just ran and did... He almost didn't have to think. It was instinctive. Every mitzvah Avram Avinu did, it was so instinctive in him. It was like he was programmed. And Avram Avinu understood intuitively what the right thing was. When it comes to the Akedah, Avram Avinu says, I don't understand what's going on here. Hashem told me to shech the Yitzchak, and like my hand is not moving. Why isn't it going? So Avram Avinu said, hand, I don't know what's, what's up with you now. Usually you just instinctively do what Hashem wants. Now, please just go do it. That's what Hashem told me to do. Now, why didn't his hand instinctively shech the Yitzchak? Because Hashem didn't want him to shech the Yitzchak. So since Hashem didn't want him to, to shech the Yitzchak, so therefore he wasn't programmed to do the, uh, the Akedah. So he had to sort of go against what his natural instincts told him and send forth his hand. That is what Rav Nassim Adler said. So Avram Avinu, you know how he knew that it's more important to greet the guests than to greet Hashem? So if you look carefully at the Pasuk, the Pasuk says like this, Vayar, Right, it says, Vayar alav Hashem elani amamrei v'yosh v'azolai chamei v'yisai alav Vayar v'nei shlosh ha'anoshim nitzam alav Vayar Vayar, it's the krosam. Why does the Pasuk say he saw two times? It says, Vayar, right? Vayar, Vayar, it's the krosam. Why does it say he saw two times? The first time the Pasuk means, Vayar, he saw the guests. And then, Aram Ravina says, Vayar, Vayar, it's the krosam. All of a sudden, Aram Ravina sees his hands and his feet are running to the guests. And Aram Ravina is looking at himself, why am I doing this? But I'm in the middle of speaking to Hashem. Ah, oh, he understood from his own actions, that it's more important to greet a guest than to serve Hashem. So you know how Avram Avinu knew it? Because of his instinctive running to the guest, despite the fact that he was in the middle of talking to Hashem. I just have one simple question for you. You're the boss, you have a business. Yeah, you have a secretary. Imagine if you would walk into the room. And as you walk into the room, the secretary would tell you, uh, Boss, how you doing? What do you need me to do? And, I, and you're, you're giving the order. And imagine if the secretary would say, Wait one second! I have to deal with the telemarketer. Please wait for me until I finish. Imagine if that would happen. Imagine if your, your attendant, your Eved, your, your, right, would tell you, Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. I have to deal with uh, some solicitation now. Yeah, that's it. They're out. Immediately. Right? What a chutzpah. The boss is here. You're telling the boss to wait because you want to deal with the telemarketer? I mean, come on. So listen to what Avram Avinu is doing. He's talking to the Reba Nisham. He's talking to God. And he's saying, Hashem, wait. Why? Because I have to greet these three Arabs that have lint in between their toes. No. That's, that, man, that's, what, that's what Avram Avinu is telling Hashem. He's saying, Reba Nisham, please wait for me. I have to go bring water to these Arabs that bow down to the dirt in between. I, they're bowing down to their fungal toes. Um, they're bowing down to the sand that who knows when the last time they washed their feet was. Uh, and, and Avram, with all seriousness, is turning his back on Hashem, running to these, uh, these Arabs. Why? Because it's more important to greet guests than to greet God? What? I mean, you're going to sit there and you're going to take that? You're going to accept that? What, what's the Gemara saying? How could that be? I mean, isn't the purpose of mitzvahs, why do we do mitzvahs? To connect to... Hashem, right? Remember, there's someone called Hashem. So we try to connect to Hashem. So how do you think you'll connect to Hashem more? By actually sitting there and beholding His presence? Or no, turning our back on Him and greeting some people who bow down to the dirt in between their toes. I mean, what's, what's going on talking about? It's more important to greet a guest than to greet the rebunish? How does that make any sense? And in fact, the Yalkut Shemoni says... 
that Hashem tells Avram, before you had bris milah, the only people who came to greet you were people who were uncircumcised. Now that you have bris milah, I, in my full glory, are coming to greet you with all the malachi hashares. Can you imagine? Avram Avinu is sitting there in his tent. God himself is greeting him. All the billions of angels are sitting around God. And Avram Avinu was in, you, you can imagine, this was the greatest pleasure Avram Avinu ever had as an entire life. The greatest pleasure available is what? To be connected to Hashem. Avram Avinu never had such closeness to the Rebbe Shalom. And what is he doing? Wait, Hashem, you mind if I put you on hold so I could give water to these people to wash their feet? Well, what's going on over here? Right? And Siv explains, and Siv says, at that moment, Avram Avinu was so immersed in love of Hashem, he was taking in the tremendous pleasure of connecting to God. And all of a sudden he says, sorry, um, let's put that on hold. I have to bring uh, some butter to the Arabs. What, what's going on here? The Mechta Meliot asks even further, it's a Chil Hashem. Is there any bigger Chil Hashem? Is there any bigger desecration in the name of God than to say, Hashem, you know, uh, I have something more important to take care of. You wait here. I'll let you know when I'm coming back. Don't go anywhere, right? Your call is important to us. That's why we'll be right back with you. Right? I mean, what? What's going on over here? What's going on? Hashem, Avram is telling Hashem to wait for him? So Maral, in Chidush HaGadosh, tries to explain a little bit. He says the following. Maral says that, of course, the most important thing in this world is to come close to Hashem. How are you going to come close to Hashem? By greeting Him? What do you mean greeting Him? You think Avram Avinu saw Hashem? La Yerani HaAdam V'chai Nobody could see Hashem. You can't see God. Even Moshe Rabbein only saw Hashem Me'achoyrei from behind. So somehow, Avram Avinu felt the presence of Hashem in a more intense way than maybe other people do. Fine, but he didn't actually see Hashem. But if I look into the face of another human being, and every human being is created, but Salam Aleichem, in the image of God, so you want to know, what is coming closer to Hashem? Sitting there with Hashem, greeting you. No, we're greeting you. You can't really see Him, you can't really perceive Him fully. You know what the closest way to see Hashem in this world? Look at the face of a human being. A human being is created in the image of Hashem. That's even closer to Hashem than if Hashem Himself comes to you. Okay? Also, not fully comprehensible. I mean, this was a prophetic experience. Arma Vinu is having a nevuah here. Hashem is talking to him directly. No, it's more important to greet a guest. I'll tell you another thing. Another thing that's very troubling. On that day, what was the weather on that day? Anybody know, right? On... Uh, what day was it? Right? Tesvav Nisan uh, in the year... Uh, 40 degrees. <laughs> right? In the year... What year was it? 2048. To 47. Right? 1947. Right. 2047. It was the year 2047. Tesvav Nisan or whatever day it was, whatever. What was the weather like? It was a hot day. It was a very hot day. Right? It was humid. It was hay. It was... You can imagine with no air conditioning back then. They didn't know what to do with themselves. It was so hot. Why was it so hot? Because it was the third day of Avram Avinu's Mila. And Hashem didn't want to disturb Avraham. So Hashem said, well, I'll do you a favor, Avraham. I'll take the cover off the sun. Right? I'll take the ozone layer off. And now you're going to bake global warming. Right? That was, by the way, that was the only time in history there was global warming. On that day. Right? Since then we have not had... Anyway, so... Hashem made it very, very hot on that day. It was too hot for human beings to come out. This way, Avram Avinu doesn't have to distress himself by serving guests. But Avram Avinu is in tremendous distress. Avram Avinu is in tremendous tsar. Why is he in tremendous tsar? Because he can't help anyone. He can't fulfill the mitzvah of Hachnasas Orchem. So what does God do? He sends three angels. Fine, Avram, I give in. I'll give you the mitzvah. That's one simple question. You probably heard this a thousand times in your life. Could someone tell me, why was Abraham distressed he couldn't do the mitzvah? Oh, imagine a guy. Oh, too bad no one got hit by a car today. I wish I could drive my Hatzalah ambulance and, you know, wipe someone off the floor. What's Abraham distressed about? Because he can't do Achnas Baruch Hashem, nobody needs hospitality. 
It's one thing if you see somebody who has a need. You know, oh, I wish I could lend them money. I wish I could give them tzedakah. I wish I could visit this sick person. Fine. But there's nobody who needs anything, Avram. So why are you in distress that you can't do the mitzvah? Nobody's passing by. Bar Hashem. Nobody needs a meal today. Well, what's his distress? Uh, oh, too bad no one's sick today. I wish I could go to the hospital to visit them. Should be, should be arrested for thinking that. Well, it's one thing, you, you know someone's sick. You feel bad, you can't visit them. But why would you're feeling bad? Oh, I wish I could help. Nobody needs help today. And then, what does Avram Avinu feed these guests? So Avram Avinu takes three cows, he shechts each one, and he gives each Arab, what? A tongue. Why the tongue? The most delectable, the most delicious, the juiciest part of the animal. No, I have another simple question for you. You're walking down the streets of Manhattan, there's a homeless guy, right? He says, oh, sir, please help me. Yeah? So you give him a quarter. Fine. You give him a dollar, you're a good guy. You give him ten bucks, you're a sport. You give him a hundred bucks, maybe you're crazy, right? <laughs> Imagine you tell him, oh, you're hungry? You're hungry? You're a really special guy. You buy the guy, you know, a loaf of bread. Maybe you'll get him a cup of water. Imagine, oh, you're hungry? Come. Let me take you into La Mare. You take him in. What do you want? What do you want? So the guy looks down the menu. He takes the most expensive steak, 150 bucks. <laughs> no problem. Then he's finished, you know. Can I have another one for the road? You get him another one. Sir, I want some wine. So you order wine for another 80 bucks. Dessert? So finally you rack up a bill, 500 bucks. I mean, is that a normal thing to do? Would any sane person do that? And I'm Ravinu. There's these three guys. They're bowing down to the dust of their feet. So they're hungry? You want to be a nice guy? Give them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You can give them chocolate milk. What is Avram Avinu doing? Three cows? Three cows? I guarantee you, if Avram Avinu would have taken one cow, given one guy the tongue, one guy spear ribs, the other guy regular steak, they would have no tightness on him. No. Only the best for my guests who bow down to the lint between their toes. No. Only the best. What's Avram Avinu doing? Is this a normal thing to do? Imagine a guy walked into a shul. How much was your S-Rog? $95,000. I mean, it needs to be his head. It's crazy. You don't have to spend so much money. Hidr mitzvah shlish. When you do a mitzvah, you're not, you only spend up to a third of the value of the mitzvah. I mean, what's Avram Avinu doing? Anybody understand that? Does it make sense to anybody? Avram Avinu is killing three cows. Forget about Peter. He's killing three cows. <laughs> Why? To give each one tongue. And then... Listen to this. Hashem says, Avram Avinu, this is such a wonderful mitzvah. This is such a beautiful mitzvah. Ah, oh, you gave them cow, you gave them meat. For 40 years I'll give the Jews meat in the desert. The love. Ah, oh, Avram, you gave them bread. I'll give the Jews man for 40 years. Avram, you gave them, you were their waiter. I will be the waiter of Klal Yisrael for 40 years in the desert. Avram, you protected them under the tree. I'll give you anane hakava. Oh, wait a second. Let's let's get the equation here. Yeah. Aravinu gave a piece of bread to three guys again who bowed down to the dust between their toes. So Hashem says, "Oh, you did such a mitzvah. I'm going to give six hundred thousand men between twenty and sixty food twice a day for forty years." I mean, is, does that does that make any sense to you? Imagine the teacher says, "Oh." You did so wonderful on the test. You wrote the first letter of your name. I'm going to give you a million dollars. Well, I mean, the guy didn't even write the name. Forget he left every answer blank. He always did. I mean, Avram Avinu, he does a little act. He gives the Archem bread for the bread. Klai Yisrael gets mun for 40 years. He says the Medrash that wasn't enough. Because Hashem said, you know what? 40 years of mun is not enough. <laughs> Listen to what the, Gemar, the Medrash says. I want to take a look. The Medrash Rava, Parsha Memches, and Bereshis. The Medrash says like this. Every act, number 14, every act of chesed that Avram Avinu did, Hashem paid back Klai so in the Midbar, in Eretz Yisrael, and for all eternity. For example, says the Medrash, Hash- Avram Avinu gave a little water to the guests. In the Midbar, we had the Be'er Shel Miriam. In Eretz Yisrael, Hashem gave us Eretz Nachal Mayim. Right? The banyas and all the, uh, all the canyons and rivers and streams in Eretz Yisrael. Why? 
because I'm Ravina brought, you know, a jar of, uh, you know, a bottle of seltzer to the guests. And all, and, 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 they're going to be beautiful streams in Yerushalayim. Why? Because Aram Avinu gave water to the guests. And Avram, you told the guests to wash their feet. In the Midbar, God came to give us baths. In Eretz Yisrael, Hashem cleansed our Averos. La'asid lavai, Hashem will wipe away all our sins. Why? Because Avram Avinu took a cup of water and he poured it on their toes. So for 40 years in the Midbar, Hashem gave us water every day. For all eternity, God's going to wipe away our sins because of Avram Avinu's little act. And the Medr says, you'd put them under the tree. 40 years of Anani Akavid. For 850 years of the mitzvah of Sukkah in Eretz Yisrael, and La'asid Lava Hashem is going to come and protect us with Anani. I mean, what exactly is the equation over here? That has, what does that have to do with what Avram Avinu did? Hashem, you want to do a favor to Klai so to do a favor, but don't hinge it on what Avram Avinu did. I mean, is that fair? Is that equal? That's reward? Somebody comes to you, you know, somebody does you a favor. He pours you a cup of water. So for, you know, for the rest of his life, you're going to pay all of his bills? Uh, that's not exactly Mida can I get Mida well, what's going on over here <clears throat> and that by the way Rabbi says the question of the Chafetz Chaim in the Avas Chasad Chafetz Chaim in the Avas Chasad asks take a look at number 16 I'll read to you the, his words V'chi b'shvil sh'omar pamachas yukach ma'ad mayim because one time Avram offered water to the guests Tzarech loseis mayim l'shishim riba yanosh meshach abram shana you have to give Klal Yisrael water for 40 years I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And then finally, there's a very interesting medrash. Listen to this. The medrash tells us that there are many mitzvahs. We don't know what the reward for the mitzvahs are. Right? The, 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 the Mishnah says in Pekhi Avais, have a mitzvah kala, kibachamura, be careful in small mitzvahs like big ones, because we don't know the reward for mitzvahs. But, there's some mitzvahs we know the reward for. For example, shiluach hakein, kibrav aim. Long life. Listen to the Medrash. And what mitzvah do you have the gift of children, banim? Listen to it, very interesting. Right? People look for all kinds of segulais. It's a Medrash. Listen to what the Medrash says. The yesh mitzvah shematan schara banim. There's some mitzvahs that the reward is children. What mitzvah could a person do that Hashem will bless them with children? Listen to this. Kemay sara she'ercha esa'archem. Sarah in, brought into her home the guests. And what do the guests tell her? Next year you're going to have a son. Also the Isha Hashunamis. The Isha Hashunamis invites Elisha. She has a son. Says the Medrash. As a reward for Chachnos Orchim, God blesses a person with children. To Medrash. And the Chavetz Chaim even brings down in the Abbas Chesed that if somebody who is looking for a segula for children, hachnas ha'sarchem. Why? What does one thing got to do with the next? How is hachnas ha'sarchem? Why is that mitzvah specifically designated for banim? So I'm very glad that you all came tonight because you're going to hear something that I hope will change your life. Very basic concept, but very important to think about. Everybody knows that Rabbanu Shem has different midos. Shem has a midah of tzedakah, mishpat. What attribute of God is most prevalent in this world? If you look around the world, what of Hashem do you see? Chesed. The Pasuk says in Tehillim, Chesed Hashem Mala Haaretz. The kindness of God fills the world. You're sitting here right now. You could see. You could hear. You could think. You could breathe. You ate something. You have shoes. You even have shoelaces. Imagine if we didn't have shoelaces. You try, you'd, you'd walk out of here. Hashem, you know, you wouldn't be able to walk down the steps. So, who gave you the shoelaces? Hashem gave you the shoelaces. You have a shirt. You have other clothing, hopefully. You have, um, you could, you could uh, think. Your digestion is working. Your heart is beating. The liver is working. The kidneys are working. Every cell in the body is working. At this moment right now, God is only showering on you trillions of chasadim. You walk down the street, you see the bird peck into the garbage. Who's feeding the bird? Noisein lechem lechol basar kilioilam chas. Barisham is feeding the bird. God, at every moment, is showering chasad. At every second. Who in this world, 
appreciated the chesed of Hashem more than anybody else? Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu looked out into the world. He sees a sun. He sees clouds. He sees rain. He sees grass. He sees fruits. He sees food. He sees air. And Avraham Avinu says, the world is full of God's chesed. And that's why if you look in the 89th chapter of Tehillim Park Peites, Maskil Le'eson Ho'ez Rachi. This is the understanding of Eson. Who's Eson? Avraham. Avraham Avinu is called Eson Ho'ez Rachi. Chazdei Hashem Oilam Ashira. The kindness of God I will sing forever. Listen to what Avraham Avinu says. Oilam Chesed Yibaneh. The world is built on kindness. At every moment... If we could put on special glasses, we would see that the world, Hashem is pouring down chesed after chesed after chesed after chesed, non-stop, non-stop on every person. Does Hashem give us exactly what we need or Hashem goes beyond what we need? Hashem goes so beyond what we need. We could see in black and white, nothing would happen. Imagine if we saw in black and white we would never know the difference. Imagine if all mankind would see in black and white. Nobody would even know there's a possibility of seeing in color. But Hashem says, no, I don't want you to see in black and white. I want you to enjoy this world. I'm going to let you see in color. What would happen if our eyes did not have automatic focus? We had to like turn like this thing in our our ear until, you know, until after looking at the Maramakam to look back at the rabbi, you had to like crank something. Nobody would know the difference. Everybody would do it. No. But Hashem said, I'm going to give you that chesed. Imagine if we could only hear four, you know, people talk at a certain decibel. Nobody would know that. But Hashem says you could hear for a half a mile away. You could see all the way down. If we only had three fingers, it would be a little bit harder to brush your teeth, but you could get the job done. But Hashem said, I don't want it to be hard. I don't want you to have a hard time turning the doorknob. I don't want you to have a hard time buttoning your shirt. I want it to be easy. And there are billions and billions of things that Hashem showers on us beyond what we need. Beyond what... Imagine if we didn't have food. Three times a day we went to a tree, we took a pill, and that would satisfy us. Imagine if all mankind would do that. Nobody would ever know the difference. We would never even think that there's a concept of chewy food, soft food, crunchy food, sour food, sweet food, spicy food. Right? No, nowadays... Three times for the whole month, you can never repeat your meal, right? Chas v'shalom. You always have to have different things all the time, right? That's why we have to order every Wednesday, we have to find a new restaurant, right? Because the chas v'shalom, we're going to order two weeks in a row from the same place, then we're not going to have as many people, right? This way, we have to keep variety, because that's Hashem showers on us, endless chesed. Rebinder shalom. Aren't you going overboard over here? Just give mankind a little vitamin. They take it three times a day. No, Hashem says, I want them to have sweet, sour, spicy, crunchy, mushy, seven different types of things on their plate. I want to shower them with chesed. Where do we say this in davening? God, you open up your hand. You satisfy every living thing's ruts and what they desire. Not what they need, what they want. What they want. God gives us what we want. You could think right now, if you would take the time, you could make a list of a billion things in your life right now that Hashem gives you that you could be perfectly fine without. Hashem gives it to you. Now, here's the thing. What happened? Hashem one day saw there were people in this world and Hashem decided, Oh, there are people in this world! Let me quickly make them food and clothing and eyes. No! Hashem doesn't work like that. It's not that Hashem saw man and Hashem said, let me give them things. There was nobody here. Nobody needed anything, right? If you're, I'm going to tell you a big chiddush. If you're not alive, you don't need anything. People who are dead, they don't need food, they don't need water, they don't need sushi, they don't need fried chicken. People who are dead have no needs. So why did Hashem create us? You know why? Because Hashem said, No, no, that's not chesed. Chesed is not, oh, I see someone who needs something, let me give them. No. Hashem created us in order to give to us. That's the chesed of Hashem. That He created us in order to give. That's what it means. Hashem created me and you to give us fried chicken, or regular chicken, or boiled chicken, or barbecue chicken, 
or, right? or all the other kinds of things. Hashem created us to do chesed to us. So Avram Avinu looks at the world, he sees the world is full of endless chesed, that Hashem doesn't, doesn't just give us what we need. Hashem goes beyond the call of duty. So Avram Avinu says, if Hashem created me, you know what my job in this world is? To emulate Hashem, to follow Hashem, to copy Hashem. Like the Pasuk says, V'halachta bidrachat, walk in the ways of Hashem. Hashem showers people with chesed. We should try to copy Hashem and shower everyone in our life with chesed. Or the Pasuk says like this, look at number 24, it's a Pasuk in Ekev. Achare Hashem elekechem teilecho. Follow God. Follow God. God is an all-consuming fire. If you follow Him too closely, you're going to burn. So Gemara says, what does it mean to follow God? Says the Gemara, follow the attributes of God. Just like God clothes the Aram, He gives clothing to people. You should give clothing to people. How do we know God clothes the naked? Because when Adam and Chava didn't have clothing, God clothed them. Just like God visits the sick. When did God visit the sick? He visited Avram Avinu. We should visit the sick. Just like God consoles the mourners, we have to console the mourners. Ah, Hashem consoled Yitzchak after Avram died. Just like Hashem buries the dead, you should bury the dead. Now I'm going to say something now, you may not like it, but it's the truth. There are people who could go through their entire lives they could perform millions of acts of kindness and they missed the boat. They could have gone to a thousand weddings in their lifetime, right? They, you know, you get all the invitations, you put them, you post them, you stick in the thumbtack into the wall. They could go to every wedding in the world and they could even drop a $500 check every time they go. And they could dance with the chassan and kala and they go home, they missed the boat. They could be Menachem Avil, every Avil in the world. They could make him feel better. Oh, I feel so bad. My heart is with you. Nah, Hashem should feel... They missed the boat. They could go and see every hungry person and feed them the most exquisite meal. They missed the boat. Because if you go into a wedding and the thought doesn't cross your mind, I am going to the wedding to make the chasan and kala happy, like Hashem made Adam and Chava happy in Gan Eden, you have not even done 1% of the mitzvah. Because the mitzvah of chesed is to emulate Hashem. You could visit, go to the hospital, visit every sick person in the hospital, bring them every medication, every food. If it didn't cross your mind, then I'm visiting the sick. Because God visits the sick, you get a mitzvah, but it's like you miss 99% of the mitzvah. You could give tzedakah. You could be the nicest guy in the world. If you do kindness, because you want to be a nice guy, you're a nice guy, but you're not doing chesed. It's not chesed. Chesed means you're emulating the ways of Hashem. You could go to every, you could bury a fat, you, you could be the head of the Hebra Kaddish, you could be the head of Hatzalah, you could be the head of Taim Chay Shabbos, and you could help people because you feel bad for them. That's wonderful. You're not doing chesed. Chesed means I am being kind, I am giving food to someone because Hashem gives food to people in this world. Hashem puts food on my supper plate so I try to give food to other people. Hashem gives me a paycheck, it's tzedakah. You think you earn it? You think you deserve it? When Hashem gives you your paycheck, you should think of it as a tzedakah. Hashem is writing you a tzedakah check. You give tzedakah to emulate Hashem. You visit the sick to emulate Hashem. You go to a wedding to emulate Hashem. And if you're not thinking that, so now tonight you should go home and you should retroactively think that every time I ever visited a sick person, I did it in order to emulate Hashem. You can make up for what you did in the past. You should think every wedding I ever went to, you thought you were wasting your time. You thought you were sitting there at the chuppah and nobody was looking you on, you were on the phone the whole time. First of all, everybody sees you. But besides that, besides that, you didn't waste your time. You should think you went to the chasana to emulate your Creator. By the way, it's very interesting. There's another Gemara. The Gemara says on the Pasuk, Zakeli vianveyu, that the word vianveyu means anivahu, I and him. Which means, just like God is compassionate, you should be compassionate. Just like God is merciful, you should be merciful. It almost sounds exactly like the Gemara that says, Achrei Hashem lekechem telechu, that just like God visits the sick, you should visit the sick. Just like God clothes the naked, you should. Just like God feeds the... 
Why do we need these two drashos? You have a drasha and the Gemara and Saita Yadalit that follow the mitzvot of Hashem, visit the sick, feed the poor. And you have a Gemara and Shabbos, Kufchav Gimel Amad Beis, that says, just like God is Chanon, you should be Chanon. Just like God is Racham, you should be Racham. Why do I need these two drashos? I'll just tell you something very interesting, very quick, that I heard in the name of Rav Asher Weiss, Shlita. He says like this, you have some people, they're so wonderful, they're so good-hearted. They want to emulate Hashem, they want to be exactly like Hashem. But when it comes to action, yeah, they want to emulate Hashem and visit all the sick. The only thing is they can't make it to the hospital. They'll, they'll never go visit anyone. They want to console all the, all the mourners, but they'll never be Menachem Avah. They, wa- they have wonderful hearts, but they never, bottom line, they never do anything. So the, the Gemara has to say, it's not enough to emulate Hashem in your heart. You have to emulate Hashem in action also. But you have some people, they could visit every sick in the world. They could feed every hungry person in the world. But in their hearts, they're saying, okay, I'm a good guy. No, that's not enough to be a good guy. You have to think you're doing it to emulate the Midas of Hashem. That is chesed. What I'm telling you now is not like a high midah for big tzaddikim. I'm not telling you something, you know, some extra righteous practice. I'm telling you the basic principle of Judaism. It's a pasuk in Chumash, v'halachta bedrachav. When you do, when you do bikur cholim, hachnasas kala, hachnasas achim, you do anything good for someone else, it's not enough to do it because you like him, because you feel bad for him, you want to be a good guy, you don't want to feel guilty. The chesed, the Torah definition of chesed is to emulate your creator. That's one of the purposes of life, to become like Rebani Shalem. The Talmud Devarah even says, even more than that, you look like Hashem. You're created but Selim Aleichem. So if you're not going to act like Hashem, you're a fraud. People are going to say, you don't, you're not playing the part. Imagine you have a guy, you know, he's an impersonator of some famous person. I'm not going to say who, right? So now you have an imp- impersonator. He looks exactly like the real thing, but then he opens up his mouth, he has a squeaky voice, you know. He just did a bad job. <laughs> right? We look like Hashem. If you're not going to act the part, you're falsifying your image. You're, f- you're a fraud. You're a phony. You look like it, you got to play the part. So listen to this. You ready for this? Says the Shlach HaKadosh. Of all the kinds of chesed you could do in this world, you could visit the sick, you could give food to the poor, you could give tzedakah, you could bury the dead. Which type of chesed is most is a, more of a replica of the chesed of Hashem than any other form of chesed? Which kind of chesed comes closest to the way God does chesed? <coughs> Says the Shlach HaKadosh. God is the balabas in this world. This is Hashem's world. We're in His house. He feeds us, he gives us to drink, he gives us a mattress, he gives us a pillow, he says, rest a little, eat a little, right? Es gesunte hate, shluf gesunte hate. God is the host, we're in his home, God is being mekayim, the Indian of hachnos hasarchem. In this world, we're all guests, we're all strangers, we're like the Pasuk says in Yermia, Perk Yedad, Pasuk Ches, we don't belong in this world. Our neshamas come down from Shemaim. We're strangers here. This world is God's home. God says, come into my house. I'll give you an apartment. I'll give you a house. I'll give you a bed. I'll give you a bedroom. I'll give you food. I'll give you clothing. Come in. And God says, listen, I'm going to be such a good host. I'll leave you alone. You won't even know I'm there. Right? It's like, you know, the Baal says, Here, my house is yours. You won't even see me. God is such a good host. He gives us everything. He says, Don't worry. I'm not even looking over your shoulder. You won't even know I'm there. Rent control. So if you want to emulate Hashem, what form of chesed in this world is most reminiscent, is closest, resembles the chesed of Hashem more than anything else? <laughs> you take someone into your home. You say, sit down, eat a little, drink a little, sleep a little. I'll feed you, I'll take care of you. That type of chesed is most, most resembles Rebani Shalom than any other. More than if you visit the sick, more even if you bury the dead, more even if you give tzedakah. It's an amazing idea, beautiful idea.
says the Shlach Kaddish. What's the purpose of life? To come close to Hashem. So there are two ways of coming close to Hashem. Hashem comes to Avram Avinu, says, Avram, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Thank you for doing the Mila. And Avram Avinu is interacting with God. He's really coming close to Him. But then Avram Avinu says, wait Hashem, I could come close to you by encountering you, but there's a better way to come close to you. By acting like you. By acting like Hashem. Acting like Hashem. So you're not just looking at Him. You're not just observing Him. You are replicating Him. You're emulating Him. Greater is Hachnasas Archem, even greater than encountering Hashem. Because when you're encountering Hashem, you're just sitting there, you're looking at Him, you feel His closeness, you feel His presence, you're in awe, but you're you and He's Him. And at the end of the day, you're light years apart. But the closest you could come to Hashem is Hashem says, I am allowing you to be like me. How do you be like Hashem? Chesed. Which chesed? Hachnas HaSarch. Says the Shla, this is what it means. Greater is Hachnas HaSarchim, even more than encountering the Shechina. Beautiful idea. Mind-boggling idea. Very inspiring idea. Says the author of Slabotka. Now ready for this one. Avram Avinu is still not fully emulating Hashem. Why not? Well, Avram Avinu, he looks into the world and he says, well, if Hashem gave me a nine-course dinner, then these Arabs, these simple people, I'm not just going to give them bread. If I'm going to emulate Hashem, I have to shower them with endless kindness. I have to give them the best possible kindness. So I have to cut open three cows and give them three tongues. Why? What do you mean? You don't have to spend so much money on your lulav and esrig. This is a different kind of mitzvah. This is, I'm acting like Hashem. The same way God gives man endless bounty, endless chesed, He showers us. He gives you not just water, He gives you Pepsi Max. So if Hashem goes, no? <laughs> or whatever. So Hashem, Avram Avinu says, to emulate Hashem, you have to go beyond the pale. Even what's more, what anybody could possibly expect, you have to do more than that. But there's one problem. Because we learned that Hashem doesn't see man and He says, Oh, man needs something. Let me give it to him. Hashem created us. Hashem wanted to do kindness to us even before we existed. So what's Avram Avinu going to do to emulate Hashem? So Avram Avinu is sitting in his tent and he's saying, I know right now there is nobody who needs anything. But in order for me to emulate Hashem, I have to engender the desire to want to do chesed even before anybody needs it. The same way Hashem wanted to create a world in order to do chesed even before anybody needed any kindness. Avram Avinu is mitzvah in his tent. Oh, I wish I could help someone even before anybody needs it. So Avram Avinu is perfectly mimicking Hashem. He desires kindness even before anyone needs it. And he does hachnas as orchim. He brings them into his home like God brings us into his home. But we're still missing one ingredient. You ready for this? Because God has the capacity to want to do kindness and then to create an entity to do kindness too. Could we do that? We could want to do kindness even before the need arises. But could we create a situation and then provide for the need? Could we desire? So Hashem says like this. Tanid Bel Yo says, these angels that came to Avram, did they eat? Or did they, you know, they put the food, you know, like when your grandmother used to feed you, right? You put the food and then you toss it behind you, right? Right? Under the table. Right? Maisa Shahaya, right? That is... Did these angels eat? So the Tanid Bel Yo says, if you think the angels didn't eat, you're mistaken. Even though angels can eat, in the zechus of the chesed of Avram, in the zechus of the tirch of Avram, God created angels that ate. What do you mean? No such thing. There's no such thing. Angels can eat? No. God created food-eating angels. Why? Because Hashem sees that Avram Avinu doesn't just want to be a nice guy. He wants to accomplish the mission in this world, and that is emulating Hashem. And in order to emulate Hashem, you have to desire, you have to be sitting in your house, I wish I could help someone. You have to, but Avram Avinu says, but 
I can't create anybody to be able to provide for their needs. So Hashem says, because you want to emulate me, I will create angels that eat so that you could mimic me perfectly. And you could do the greatest chesed in history. So I would like to add one point. I think it's very nice. Avra, Hashem is looking down at Avraham Avinu. He's saying, Avraham, you're being mekayim in the mitzvah achnos asarchem. You're mimicking me perfectly. You're, being, you're following my midas. You're taking people into your home like I take people into this world, into my home. You desire to do kindness even before the need arises. You're showering these people with tongue well beyond the call. But there's one problem, Avram. You can't create anybody to do kindness to them. Yes, you can. Says Rebbein Shem, as a reward for the mitzvah achnas asarchem, what's the schar? Children. Hashem says, you want to emulate me? I will allow you to desire to do kindness. You desire kindness so much that you could bring people into this world to be able to provide for them. Who could a person bring into this world? Children. That is why the Medrash says, the reward for the mitzvah of Achnasas Archim is Banim. Why? Because that's the only ingredient missing to be able to emulate the Rebani Shalom perfectly. Avram Avinu brings people into his house like the Rebani Shalom. Avram Avinu desires to do kindness even before the need arises. But to create a, you, a person? That too. That too. As a reward for Achnasas Archim, Hashem says, the schar is Banim. And that is why the Shlach explains. Of all the kinds of chesed Avram Avinu did, the one chesed the Torah speaks about in the greatest detail is hachnas Archem. Because that is the closest that you could come in this world to emulating Hashem. And I put on the sheets a few very interesting points. So we mentioned, you know, whenever you help somebody, really the motivation should be to want to emulate Hashem, to want to mimic the Reba to want to copy the Reba Hashem, to want to be like Hashem. Rav Miller writes, you know, but most of my day I'm working. I'm working. What am I accomplishing? Am I achieving in this world? Says Rav Miller, listen to this. God is Avi Yisoyimim, the Dayan Amanos, right? God feeds the widows. God feeds the orphans. If you're thinking when you're working, I want to emulate Hashem. God provides for the widows and orphans. So I'm going to go to work to provide for my wife, for my children. So what am I doing? I'm copying the creator of the universe. I'm emulating Hashem. So instead of spending 10 hours just making money, you should actually be fulfilling your mission in this world, your purpose in this world. And that is, you emulate. how am I emulating Hashem by the cash register ringing again and again? You're emulating Hashem. Why? Because you're thinking, I'm going to work to be able to feed those who are dependent on me, like those, like Hashem is noisein lechem l'chal basar You just change your whole day. You change your whole life. Your whole life, right? You change your whole life. If a doctor heals people only because he wants to make money, or only because he feels bad, he's not, he could be doing a lot more. If he thinks, I'm healing people because I'm emulating Hashem who's Roy Fei Choy Amo Yisrael, he's changed his whole life for him. If someone provide, gives people medicine because, they're well, Hashem in the body provides antibodies to every cell in the body. God's the greatest uh, pharmacist in the world. So I'm going to distribute medicine to be like Hashem. The whole day, you're becoming like God. But really anything you do, if you're thinking you're going to work to provide because you want to emulate your Creator who provides the world, the greatest possible mitzvah. Rav Miller even writes, when a mother, mother changes kid's diaper. Okay, I'm, I didn't make this up. So, you know, seems like a, a menial task, right? What are, you, what are you accomplishing? Tremendous mitzvah! You know what the Navi tells us? God washes away the tzoya of our sins. The excrement when a person sins, it's like he rubs soya on his neshama. Who wipes it away? God calls the janitor to come with the mop? No. God Himself comes with the mop and He wipes away the sin. So if you think you're cleaning your child, because you're emulating God, God cleans us, so we're cleaning, you're doing a tremendous thing. Timer Devara writes, 
you were able to see the face of Hashem, what's Hashem doing? You know, is He frowning at us? Is He smiling at us? God, at every moment, He's beaming at us. He's smiling at us. God never frowns. So if you smile at someone because you say, I'm emulating my Creator, you're doing a tremendous Indian, tremendous thing. And the truth is, whatever you do the whole day, with the proper thought, with the proper preparation, you could transform the smallest, the most insignificant act into the most divine achievement. And that is what Avram Avinu is teaching us. That you have three ordinary people. It's not enough to give them bread. It's not enough to give them good food. Only the greatest food. Why? Because if you want to emulate the Rebani Shalom, who showers us with endless chesed, and is Paisach HaSidach HaMasbiel Chochai Ratzayin, the best way to emulate that is to shower other people with chesed. To develop the midah that whatever comes forth from you, whatever you say, whatever you do, whatever you think should flow forth from the midah of chesed. And Hashem looks at Avram Avinu and He says, what you did, it may look small, but I see how this is the perfect emulation of me. You wanted to do chesed even before the need arose. I created angels just like I create people to do chesed to them. This is the perfect emulation of me, the greatest chesed in history. The reward will be 40 years in the Midbar, 850 years in Eretz Yisrael, and tremendous bracha of Asachar to Kal Yisrael. Ad Yemais HaMashiach. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Have a good evening. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.